Hi there, this is a video on your uh, assignment to do texture and pattern. And for this assignment, I've asked you to use wood. Um, I've chosen wood as a fairly readily available material that's pretty easy to use. And uh, we're not gonna really use it with any sophistication. We're just going to get involved with, with the material. And our only goal, well, we have a few goals. One is to experience starting to manipulate materials and tools. And the other thing is, to start thinking more about texture and pattern. What are their similarities and differences? So you need to make four objects, uh, two that have texture and two that have pattern. And here is um, a perfectly acceptable piece of wood. It's a piece of two by four. This is called dimensional lumber when it's commercially produced like this. This is a four by four. And each of these are perfectly acceptable for your project. Uh, you'll need four pieces. You could also just get a, a piece of branch here. Um, this is just a piece of fig tree that was cut down, a little branch of a fig tree that I have taken a section of. So that you can do. Now the good thing about this is that you don't have to spend any money for something like this. If you know of a construction site near you, you could go visit the people working there, of course keeping socially distanced nowadays, and ask if you might have some scrap lumber. They are um, uh, probably surrounded by small bits and scraps and would be happy to offer one. If you don't have this lying around where you live, um, the other thing you could do is go to any hardware store and these small amounts, you can say, look, I'm an art student. My teacher wants me to pound on a piece of wood. Um, I need four small pieces. Can I, can I raid your scrap bin? And um, that way you can save yourself uh, some money uh, in doing this. Um, and of course, there's the, the tree branch, which is, as I say, three. So those are um, the materials you'll need, and I've given you some examples of that. And then um, it might be nice to have some tools to work with. I don't know what tools you do have around your house or are willing to get access to. Um, if you don't have them, a friend of yours might have them, and you might be able to, keeping, of course, socially distanced um, and being safe, borrow some tools. Um, if that doesn't work for you, uh, the dollar store has some tools. Uh, the caution there is that um, you get what you pay for. They're, they they should last for the purposes of this class, but they will never be your favorite tools. They're they're pretty uh, inexpensive and poorly made, but they often do the trick. I use them for many um, kinds of workshop uses. The other places you can get tools is a place called Harbor Freight. Weird name, but Harbor Freight is a place that sells. Um, medium quality tools at a very reasonable rate. So and they're all tools. It's just chock full of tools. And um, they usually put out a flyer that gives you a 20% discount on one purchase every visit. So you can uh, try them out. There is a Harbor Freight in Fairfield. I'm sure there's one in Vallejo. I know there's one in back in, um, there's one in Woodland. So um, those are some places. Let me show you, uh, a hammer would be nice. This is a, a typical claw hammer here. Um, it's um, uh, your basic hammer. You may already have this around the house, um, or you can get it at one of the sources I told you. Here's another one. Uh, this is a, I think it's about a two and a half pound hammer, if I'm not mistaken. It might be a five pound. I think it's two and a half pounds. Anyway, it's a, it's a big old hammer. It's just a lot of weight for, for making a big impression. Um, and that's all it's, it's for. Um, but there are many different kinds of hammers you can explore. A uh, ball peen hammer would have a nice round end that would make interesting uh, textural indents on your wood. You just, just hit it for 20 minutes and I think you'd find a fine texture. Now here's a hammer that comes back um, literally millennia here. This is a hammer. Um, this is, um, a, uh, of course, a rock. And so you've heard of the rock age, uh, the stone ages, and the stone ages were where these were, what the tools were made out of. So um, you could uh, use this as well as, a, as an inexpensive way to get done. It might be nice to have a saw. If you have a saw, you can get already start to think of ways that you could put texture and pattern into a piece of wood with this. So this is a uh, cross-cut saw. Um, again, you might have one, a friend might have one. Um, they are available at the sources I told you. Here's another kind of saw. This is used typically for metal. It's, um, it's a hacksaw, love that name, uh, and it's, it has a replaceable blade. It's slower than a, uh, on wood, it will work on wood, but it's uh, much slower than uh, a cross-cut saw. So another tool that might be helpful 
is um, a clamp. So you can hold, if you're gonna be sawing on a piece of wood, you could clamp it to the table you're working with and um, it would um, hold your, your wood. And the way it works is um, there's, a, there's a trigger here and you start squeeze, as you squeeze that trigger, it gets closer and closer until it actually makes a big grip on your wood. And you'll see here, so I would put this wood on a piece of table and then on a table and then hold it in place like that. And then if I wanted to release it, I just push this little button here and there it goes. So those are some tools that would be helpful. You will need a pencil and you'll need a ruler. Um, if you have one of these, these could be very helpful in many ways too. This is a square. Um, and um, it has a ruler component that I can slide in and out to use. So for pattern, um, as, you'll, as you do the readings and, and look through the, the pages that I provided for you, you'll notice that one difference is that texture tends to have an overall chaotic quality, whereas pattern is, is uh, predictable. So measuring will probably be helpful for a ruler would be helpful. Here, um, I'm gonna put a, a, a a mark on here with a pencil and that will give me and what I'm doing I'm kind of show you here but let me bring this down to where you can see where I'm working there you can see I'm just using the, the um, piece of four by four to just make a line a little uh, barrier all the way around the bottom of this uh, branch to give me a stopping point and then I think what I'll do is you'll see here this has a core right in the middle of the branch and I'm going to take the saw and cut a line from the line that I've made here towards that core um, and just keep doing that all the way around as I turn it I can do it all the way around and I think that might make an interesting texture. It'll take a while but hey you know this is a fun thing to do so I'm going to try these different things. Another way to do pattern might be to put um, holes and, and screw screws. This is a little uh, drywall screw right here. And I have also some washers that I, I have lying around. And again, these things are available. Um, one of the great places to get these sorts of things was um, garage sales, but I don't think those are all very popular or realistic right now in the age of COVID. So we're being safe, we're being careful, and we're being creative. That's our goal. Um, if you have a drill, let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to find where my drill is. I'm going to put it around here somewhere. Um, no, I'll find that later. Okay, so I will also use a hand drill, um, uh, a power drill uh, for the screw thing. But again, you can make patterns with or without that. So um, it's up to you. Explore, you need two patterns and two textures.